morning, folks. So we begin Lent, uh, first Sunday of Lent today. Faces of Jesus is our new uh, sermon series. And uh, don't you love our Faces of Jesus up here? We have 14 different faces. We tried to have them be as diverse as we could get them. Some are old, some are new, some are way back, some are way contemporary. Um, I encourage you during the, this season uh, to take a, a chance to come up and, and spend some time with these, uh, see which one really draws you. Um, they're they're going to be up during the, this whole season of Lent, and I think it's wonderful to have Jesus looking out on us this whole, this whole season. We don't really know what Jesus looked like, uh, which is, gr- I think, wonderful. I mean, if he was born today, we would know everything about that, right? We would have thousands of pictures on Facebook. Uh, But um, because of of the fact that we don't really know, we're able to um, kind of see him from a lot of different points of view. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing. That's what we're going to be doing this whole season of Lent. Dostoevsky said this, he said, I believe there is nothing lovelier, deeper, more sympathetic, or more perfect than the Savior. I say to myself with jealous love that not only is there no one else like him, but there could be no one. I would say even more, if anyone could prove to me that Christ is outside the truth, and if the truth really did exclude Christ, I should prefer to stay with Christ and not with the truth. There is in the world only one figure of absolute beauty. Christ, that infinitely lovely figure is, a matter, is, as a matter of course, an infinite marvel. Jesus is absolute beauty. That's one way to describe him. Sovereign over the past, the present, and the future, Jesus is the Lord of time. What might it be with Jesus is connecting with his past, present, and future, his resurrection, you know, his life after death? We are in touch with him with all that he was, all that he is for us, all that he will be. Jesus is there at the beginning of the heavens and the earth. Our scripture reading from Hebrews brings this into, into uh, our hearing and Colossians, which we heard for our call to worship this this morning are all speaking about Jesus being with God at the beginning. Jesus puts a human face on on the the whole creation. The book of Hebrews says, long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways, but in these last days he spoke to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He's the reflection of God's glory the exact imprint of God's very being. Past, present, and future meet in Jesus. Let's break that down this morning. That's what we're going to do. Our experience with time. Does anybody know what time it is? I'm already dating myself. Um, One way we deal with time is to fight it. (laughs) Fight it. We battle time. Every moment of time is important to us. We try to hold on to it. Ever try to hold on to time? It's here. No, it's here. No, no it's, it's over here. I, I lost it. I, I, can't quite, I can't quite... It's already passed. It's already moving. It's constantly moving. We don't have enough hours in the day to spend doing what we want to do with our families, our friends, our colleagues. On a list of 19 personal concerns uh, on a survey, the number one worry of people from 18 to 55, I don't know what happens when you're over 55, (laughs) watch it, was never having enough time. 64% said they almost never had any extra time. We battle time by trying to fit in as much as we can into a day, an hour, a minute, a second. <laughs> we try to cheat time. We try to prove, I don't know to who, that we can do it, that we can fit more into it than is possible. We try to be two places at the same time. We try to 
squeeze every minute, every thing we can at it. We try to conquer it. The result is, and I know this from personal experience, and some of you do, we end up getting to places barely on time, or sometimes a little late. I was talking with uh, somebody this, this week who does workshops around the country. He says, I gotta know when the workshop starts. I can tell by where I am in the country. In the Midwest, it starts 15 minutes early. In the Northeast, it starts a few minutes late. We're trying to squeeze it all in. It's a growing edge for me, learning to live at time's pace and try to make it uh, to be my liking. So the story is told of a corporation that comes to a primitive region and wanted the locals to work seven days a week, you know, as many hours as they could, lots of overtime. They were going to pay them for the overtime, but still it was constant work, constant work. Manager inquired about what they were doing um, when one day they just all weren't there. <laughs> we're not working today. And what they told the manager was, we have to let our souls catch up with our bodies. Instead of battling time, continually pushing it, why don't we accept that we have all the time we need? How about that as a thought for Lent? Instead of living in scarcity, live in abundance. How about we have all the time we need? As soon as I'm saying that, I know you're already processing. He doesn't know my life. <laughs> I know how busy we are. I know that we are in this constant movement. We have all the time we need. What is, instead of fighting it, what if we, I know this is a little bit odd way of looking at it, but play with me today. How about forgiving it? It's not out to get us, right? When we forgive time, we allow it to be what it is. It's no longer our adversary. It's no longer working against us, trying to catch us unprepared or unfinished. We can put down our armor, let down our defenses, and accept that there's more available time than we thought there was. I hear football players talking about slowing the game down. You know, he's slowing the game down. Not literally, is he? They're not slowing the game down. The game, the game doesn't get slower when, you know, when they become veterans. It's that they're seeing things unfold. They're, 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 living, they're, they're stepping back from the rush. And they're just kind of seeing how things unfold. They're seeing how the defense sort of, you know, the patterns. And then they just move with that. Even at quick, fast speeds. Like them, we can learn to participate in time rather than trying to force it or manage it or push it, go ahead of it. So instead of fighting time, we can forgive time and let it slow down, let the pace of our, our game be a little slower. Another way we interact with time is we flee from it. All these F words is what I'm giving us here, you know, it's either fight or forgive or flee. So we flee. We're curious about time uh, moving backwards and forwards. In Gulliver's travels, the Lilliputans were convinced that Gulliver's watch was his God because he looked at it so often. You know, I have this picture of Jesus sitting at the Last Supper. If it was today, all the 12 disciples would have their cell phones. And he's trying to talk to them, right? You know, please silence your cell phones. There they are, you know. That would be us. What is it that, who do we really worship, right? Peabody and Sherman, do you remember them? Do you remember them? Do you remember the Wayback Machine? Looking this up, it's, they actually spelled it W-A-B-A-C. I love that. The Wayback Machine. Peabody and Sherman. Peabody is the father. Sherman is the son. They go back in time. They see a Roman who is speaking Latin. They look closer, they find out he's a used chariot salesman. <laughs> That's great. This is on the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. So uh, they have uh, always, you know, Sherman, or Mr. Peabody at the end always has some little way of ending the, the series. They, they go back in time to meet all these different people. But here's one, he says, set the way back machine to my puppy days, Sherman. 
so I can pummel you when you try to have me fixed. Yeah. But there's a lot of other, uh, you know, uh, cultural uh, experiences we have of moving around in time, moving back and forth. It seemed for a while we, were, we had lost in space, we had back to the future. We had, uh, it's about time, it's about spice. We had Time Tunnel, I loved all these shows. Uh, and today, it's Outlander, right? It's Outlander, same idea. You know, moving back in time, in and out. Don't you love that? You know, bringing, bringing something of the present back and the, and the back into the present, moving into the future. They all captivate our imagination, being able to move around in time. So there's this aspect of sort of, you know, being able to do that and sort of let it go. Well, we all need to escape time occasionally. You know, but I want, want, want to hold that in balance. What if we, along with the escaping, we also find something? You know, we're also stepping into something. We're not just running away from it and sort of you know, forgetting about it for a while, as good as that is. We're also, we're also wanting to find something, see what it is that time is opening us up to. Try something new instead of just going for the nostalgia. You know, whatever, what, what channels do you have on your, your car radio? You know, are they the oldies? Are they the way oldies? <laughs> are they, do you ever listen to something else? It doesn't have to be necessarily new. It could be new for you. You know, something else that maybe you haven't been uh, orienting yourself to or, or making yourself available to. Try something new, a new hobby maybe, new music. Time expands when we're focused on finding and not just fleeing. And then another, another pair is freeze, another one of these words. We, we try to freeze time, try to hold on to it, try to grab it, you know, for all that it is. Um, we try to hold certain moments because we believe they last, they'll last forever. Some of them do, don't they? Picturing some of those moments in your time, you know, a time with a child, a time when maybe you were married, a time when something, you know, just everything seemed to be bigger than life. Those moments do last. Those are the God moments, right? They do last. But we don't have to freeze them in place. We don't have to keep going back to them. We don't have to try to keep them in, in, a, in a little box. We can free them to grow and expand our understanding. We can see what they might have to sp say to us to today. According to the creators and writers of Doctor Who, which is a TV show coming from the BBC, imaginary story of Doctor Who, there are time lords in this story who travel through time and space in a ship called the TARDIS, which means time and relative dimensions in space. It's a great story, Doctor Who. In the episode Blink, the Doctor explains that time itself is not linear. It's actually a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey uh, stuff. Maybe not quite as elegant as the Bible, but it's getting at the right, the same thing, right? Time isn't just marking days on a calendar. You know, we need to do that. Right? We need to structure our lives. We need to know what's coming, you know, next, where we've been. We mark that. In the Psalms, David says, with you a thousand years is but a day. How else could we Talk about that, except that God is, you know, stretching across, sweeping through all of time, past, present, and future. When Moses asked God for God's name, the response that God gives is, I am. Just to say, I'm not frozen. I'm not stuck in the past. I'm not where you thought I was, even a moment ago. I am now. I am present. I am the eternal now, we could say. When Jesus was before Pontius Pilate, when questioned about his identity, he simply said to Pontius Pilate, I am. And in today's scripture reading, which he read for us today, we heard uh, one of these experiences of the, of the disciples on the water and the 
course, whenever they're on the water, there's always a storm, isn't there? There's a lot of storms in the Sea of Galilee. I think there is today, too. What's that? Don't get into a boat with a disciple. That was the lesson of today. Right. <laughs> right. Don't wait for the next cruise, right? Don't, don't do that one. Uh, so they see Jesus walking to them, and he says, in, in many of the other, tra- many translations, it just says, fear not. But here's what the Greek says. I am fear not, which is what we had this morning. I am is what Jesus said. They're coming towards, I mean, he's walking towards them, and they have no idea what's going on. And he says, I am. Don't be afraid. You know, I have to admit um, that this phrase that God and Jesus is the great I am didn't mean that much to me. And I, you know, studying the Bible and hearing that phrase, I am, um, Yeah, okay, you are. God exists. Okay, that doesn't say a whole lot. I'd kind of like to have a little more. You know, when when Moses says, don't you think Moses was going, yeah, give me a little more on that. (laughs) Except maybe I am is is code, is is a summer, is sort of a little, little way for us to get the fact that God is that all of history, all of past, present, and future. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. In summary, I am, whenever we say that. C.S. Lewis made this observation about time. He said that time is always now, which means our past can begin to change so that our forgiven sins and heavy sorrows can take on a quality of heaven. What about that? Our past can change. What a thought. It's not that the actual past changes, but our whole orientation to it can change. So that our forgiven sins and our heavy sorrows can take on the quality of heaven. They can be redeemed. Our past can be redeemed, friends. Our past isn't just past. Well, that's past. We usually think that means we forget about it. Well, maybe God can redeem some aspect of that that needs redeeming. Scriptures tell us that Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. With me, time is no more. Jesus was at the beginning. (laughs) He will be at the end. The beginning and the end of our lives as well. We fight, flight, flee, and freeze time, but God's response is to say, relax. Do not be afraid. I am. You don't have to keep battling, running, and trying to hold on. I am. Jesus Christ is always here, not just in this moment. For Christ links all of those memories and all of those dreams and all of those histories and all of those promises and all of our story. He's the, that I am links our whole story. Even the parts we wish we could lop off. He's linking that in, even, even that. Those pieces we wish, we wish didn't happen can be redeemed. Um, my son Jordan, at tw- age 12, <clears throat> he was angry. You know, life was changing. There were things happening, and he was really unhappy about it. He was crying. He was shouting. He was, you know enraged, Um, childhood to, you know, growing up, a lot of things happening at the same time. And there he was in our den at home. He couldn't get a hold of himself at all. Um, He was just shouting at me, shouting at life, shouting at the world, crying, raging. He ran outside, out in our backyard, and he's running out there, and I ran after him. I had no idea what I was going to do or say. So I just, I got there to him and I just, I just hugged him. I said not one word. And in a, in a little while he calmed down. He started to breathe. You know, started to feel again. 
didn't say a word. What I, real, what I was saying was, fear not, I am. And occasionally parents get it right. <laughs> a lot of times we miss it, but, but sometimes we get it and touch, right? Contact. We need that. Jesus is saying, I'm here. I'm I'm here to touch you. I'm here to be present with you. I'm that close to you. I'm intimate. I'm real. I am. As Lord of time, Jesus is redeeming the past. Let us have hope, relying on him, the Lord of time, and on his words of promise. Behold, I make all things new. I make all things new. Revelation chapter 25, 21, verse 5. I make all things new. Think for a moment about the times of your lives. Where is your mind going? Where has it been going during this sermon? Where has it been wandering? Wherever that is, God is there. Jesus, I am is there. He can bring something out of that place where you are that wasn't there before. John Donne wrote this Beautiful poem that I want to share. Um, This is from the 1600s. God made sun and moon to distinguish seasons and day and night, and we cannot have the fruits of the earth but in their seasons. But God hath made no decree to distinguish the seasons of his mercies. In paradise, the fruits were ever ripe the first minute, and in heaven it is always autumn. His mercies are ever in their maturity. We ask our daily bread, and God never says you should have come yesterday. He never says you must come tomorrow. But today, if ye will hear his voice today, he will hear you. He brought light out of darkness, not out of a lesser light. He can bring thy summer out of winter, though thou have no spring. All occasions invite his mercies, and all times are his seasons. This week I invite you to offer some aspect of your time, some piece that maybe you haven't been able to let go of, one of those times that just keeps coming back. Maybe it has you in some way. Take whatever that is, And offer it to God. Let God redeem your time. He's the God of all time, right? Including your time. Your times. Free you from whatever way that time is making you captive. Give that to Jesus. Jesus was, is, and is to come. He died, he rose again in order to allow us to live with him always. Not just into the future, but also redeeming our past. May all of your time be redeemed by the great I am. Let us pray. God, we're blessed by your presence. Not just the knowledge of it, but by the awareness, by the uh, intimate way that You meet us, you hold us, you remind us that you are here. We do not need to fear. Help us to let your words settle deeply within us and to find the the grace, the forgiveness, the peace that you want for all of us to receive. We pray in Jesus' name.